All right, guys, so we're back with another video. So now we're going to go ahead and write some code that will interact with the YouTube API. But before we do that, we need to actually download a client in order to actually interact with the API. Now, if you actually go on this link over here, developers.google.com slash API hyphen client hyphen library, it basically it's going to show you all of these different libraries that Google itself maintains. So you can see there's a Java library, there's a Python library, PHP.net. JavaScript, Objective-C, Dart, Ruby, Node.js, and Go. We're going to want to download the Node.js one. The JavaScript one is for the front end. The Node.js one is for the back end. If you click on this, it's going to take you to a GitHub repository. And you can see that it says Google's officially supported Node.js client library. Okay, so this means that this whole library itself is supported and maintained by Google. You can go and look through and read about it. And you can see there are some examples. But all we're going to do is we're going to just copy this and PM install Google API. And I'm going to go ahead and make a project real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and do Mictor YouTube API Playground. And all this code will be in the description. And I'm going to go ahead and simply just make a directory called search because we're going to be searching. And I'm going to go ahead and inside the YouTube API Playground, not inside search, I'm going to go ahead and do npm init hyphen y. And I'm going to install Google API. So that's Google and an API with an S at the end. And I'm also going to install .env because we're going to use environment variables. We're going to use it to store our token. So now that we have both of these modules installed, I'm going to just simply create a uh, .env file or uh, yeah, .env file. So I opened up Visual Studio Code, and you can see right over here, we have our folder empty, create a new file outside of the search folder, but inside the root folder. So you can see how the .env file is outside. Okay, this is very important. I'm going to go ahead and simply just go ahead and do uh, token. Uh, let's, let's call this YouTube token, or we can just call it Google token. doesn't really matter. And what you're going to want to do is you want to get your API token. So that's this one right over here. Like I said, if you forget where your API token is located, you just want to simply go to your project. You're going to click on credentials. And then you're going to just click right over here and you just copy it like that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just paste it right over here. And now inside search, I'm just going to simply do uh, index. And now inside the search folder, I'm going to create a new file called index.js. And I'm going to go ahead and just require the dot end module and then call the config function. Now, depending on where you're running your script, if you have to run the script from the root folder in order for the dot end file to actually work, in order for the dot end module to actually load up the correct environment variables. Otherwise, if you run the index.js file inside the search directory, you have to you have to move the dot env. Uh, file inside of here, but we're going to run it from the uh, YouTube API playground directory. Okay, so for example, if I go ahead and do console log process .env YouTube token, because that is the name. And if I go ahead and just do node mon search index.js, it's going to log our token. But if I go inside search, and if I do the same command, but with index.js, it's going to say undefined. So it's very important that you understand this. So you can either just run every single file, well, not every file, but wh whichever files you want from the root directory, or you can just cd into the search directory and just uh, move the .n file in there. Okay, now if I rerun the project again, you can see that we have our API key. But I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to do it the original way. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that should be pretty much it for the environment variable. So now we're going to go ahead and import the Google APIs module. So we're going to do const Google. So curly braces require Google APIs. Now there are a whole bunch of APIs that you can use. You can kind of like scroll through and see like what APIs that we can interact with. We're going to use the YouTube API. Okay. So I'm going to do Google.YouTube. And this is going to take in the version. So we're going to use version three and we're going to go and do dot search. So you can see that we can do a bunch of different things. We can search for so many different stuff, whatever resources we want right over here. But we're just going to go ahead and call dot search, which is a property. And it's going to have a method called list. 
And inside here is where we're going to want to pass in our parameters for the request. And like I said, you refer to the documentation to see all of the different parameters that we can pass in. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. And for the parameters, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to pass in my key. So this is your API key. So we're going to do process.env.youtube token. And I'm going to pass in part next. And we're just going to put snippet. Then I'm going to go ahead and do this queue, which is the search. So you can just search whatever you want. So if I want to search something like Joji, for example. Okay, I can do that. And this list method returns a promise. Okay, so we can handle the promise by calling dot then. And inside the dot then method, we're going to go ahead and pass in a callback function. And the callback function is going to have one parameter, which is the response from the API. And we're just going to console log the response. And we're just going to catch any errors that happen. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and run search index.js. Remember, I'm running it from the root directory. Okay, there we go. And bam, just like that. You can see we have all of our results. Okay, and we only have, let's see, seems like we only have, uh... oh, we need to get the data. So we have the headers, we have um, the request, we have a bunch of different, uh, this is the entire response uh, itself, but we want to reference dot data because that's the actual data that we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to go inside response and we're going to just type dot and you can see that we have a lot of these different properties we can reference. We're going to reference data. And if I save again, you're going to see now I have five results. And inside this items array, I can go ahead and loop through this array and get all of the data that I want. So if I want to list, uh, let's say, for example, if I want to list, um, we can look at the response. Uh, we can look at the mock response from here. And you can see, okay, let's look over here we can loop through all of the items and we can reference the snippet property okay and we can reference the title property inside snippet so let's do that so let's go ahead and do const data so we're using object structuring so i'm getting the data value from the response property or so i'm getting the data property from the response object i'm storing inside this data variable and I'm going to go and do data for each. So wait, what, what happened over here? Oh, data the items for each. So for each item, I'm going to go ahead and I can reference the snippet. Okay, so I'm going to do console log. So let's do uh, title item dot snippet. And then we can go ahead and just have the title. And then we'll do a new line character. And what else do I want to do? Uh, Item.snippet. Let's do description. And I'll just do description. Okay, and that itself should be fine. And we'll just console log this. So you can see we have a uh, title Joji. Give me love, official video. The description. Title Joji run. Slow dancing in the dark. Sanctuary. 88 rising. And a whole bunch of other stuff. And of course, like I said, I can increase the max results by just simply passing in the max results parameter and i'll change this to let's say 10 and now we're going to have 10 results so we have let's see where are we let's restart so you can see right over here we have all of our previous results and then we have run a test drive will he run and then 10 things joji can live without that's a, that's a gq video and yeah and i think you guys get the idea Okay, so this is just a very, very simple implementation of interacting with the YouTube API using the Google APIs client. Okay, so hopefully this all made sense. And if you guys have any questions, just feel free to leave a comment down below or join my Discord server. The link is in the description and I'll be happy to help you guys out. But just to kind of recap everything, all we did so far was we downloaded Google APIs, which is a node module. Okay. Remember, there are different client libraries that we can download. If you wanted to reiterate, if you wanted to implement this in Python, you would just download the Python library. Okay. And the Google APIs, there are so many different APIs we can use. 
we're using the YouTube API. Okay, we're using version three, so we pass in V3. We reference the search property, which has the uh, list method on the search object. Okay, and then we pass in our key, we passed in the part, and then Q, remember Q is the search that we want to perform. So if I want to search for something else, I would type it inside Q. And of course, I can make a function that will wrap everything inside of here and return the data. Okay, and then whatever uh, result, whatever search I want to pass into that function, we just replace that with whatever uh, this value is right over here. Obviously, I'm just hard coding this, but you can do whatever you want. Okay, so hopefully, like I said, hopefully this video made sense, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.